So let's take a look at the driving force for spin nodal decomposition. Again, we are showing these two related plots. The top one is, again, as we mentioned, part of a phase diagram. The vertical axis is temperature. The horizontal axis is composition, left side pure A, right side pure B. And above this solid black curve, we have uniform single phase solid solution that we call alpha. Below this solid black curve, we have a two phase mixture we call alpha 1 plus alpha 2. Okay, and uh, then within this two phase region, there will be a dashed, this green shaded region outlined by this dashed curve, which people call spinodal uh, curve. And within this green shaded region, if a system composition drops from high temperature, such as T1 into this green shaded region, then the system may experience, would experience spinodal decomposition types of phase transformation. While outside this green shaded region, but still within this two phase region, the system would experience um, nucleation growth types of precipitation to go from one single phase to two phases. The bottom plot again represents the Gibbs free energy versus composition curve at a given temperature. And in this case, for example, it's represent a T2 curve, represent T2 temperature. Okay, and the common tangent, common tangent for this Gibbs free energy curve represent the binodal line which is the equilibrium phase boundary line between the single phase and two phases. That's for the common tangent. Well, the inflection points, the two inflection points on this curve, the transition between concave down versus concave up, those inflection points correspond to this solid dashed line, which people call spinodal boundary within these two inflection points we have concave down uh, and while well, we are going to experience spinodal decomposition well outside this um, inflection points between the inflection points and the common tangent line this region we would uh, go through the so-called uh, nucleation growth. Well, outside this common tangent line, then we would be in single phase region. Okay, so that's kind of what we uh, said before. And then let's assume the initial system uh, matrix composition of X0. Where is X0? It is here, X0. Initial system composition, which is force in between the two inflection points at T2 temperature. Okay, and then for let's assume the system changes was quenched from T1 above the critical temperature, which is here, T1 above critical temperature to T2, which is within the spin nodal chemical spin nodal composition. Okay. And initially, the system free energy would be at a G0. And uh, assume, for simplicity, it locally experiences a so-called compositional fluctuation, which means from the initial composition, some part within the system become a little bit richer in B, some other part becomes a little bit leaner in B or a little bit richer in A. Okay, and the extent of fluctuation we call it delta x. Again, x is for molar fraction of the solute, for example, B in this case. And as we said, the local system free energy before fluctuation, right when we quenched from T1 to T2, at temperature T2, initially before any composition fluctuate, which means the system is uniform, the free energy would sit on this black, on this blue curve at G0, 
while while I'm pointing. Okay, that the system free energy before an, any composition fluctuation, and then the system free energy after this composition fluctuation, after some part of the system become a little bit richer in B, and the remaining part become a little bit leaner in B, or a little bit richer in A. Okay, then based on what you learned. In thermodynamics, after the system become a little bit richer in A and some part a little bit leaner in A, then the system free energy would be the follows on this connection line, and specifically it to be represented by this point that we call G zero prime. Okay, G zero prime, and specifically let's assume it's a half half. Um, partition half becomes a little bit richer in B the other half become a little bit leaner in B and how much richer by data X okay and then for the one half that is richer that part of the Gibbs free energy is half of initial times we did essentially Taylor expansion the first order derivative with respect to composition times the concentration fluctuation plus the second order derivative times the fluctuation to the power of two of the square term and then of course don't forget we have a one over two here and of course we would enact act the third order and the higher order terms the first uh, bracket represent the Gibbs free energy for the half that is richer well, the bottom bracket represents the other half that becomes a little bit leaner in solute B or a little bit richer in A. Okay, still it's half, but then G0 represents the initial condition and then the first order derivative times minus data x because now we are a little bit leaner in um, concentration plus the second order term as what we uh, listed here and because it's second order the minus data x square becomes just the data x square so this equation gives us the system Gibbs free energy after the composition fluctuation of plus and minus data x okay which represents on this tie line which is here then the local uh, system free energy change change from initial state uniform composition to fluctuated half rich half linear would be data g v v for molar free energy change would be volume free energy change would be the initial the final state minus initial state final state that g prime zero okay that's the final state with fluctuation and the inertial state is G0. Okay, the change in free energy is final state minus initial state. Let's continue. Okay, and then for simplicity, let's assume the system interfacial energy and the string energy can be completely neglected, which means there's no volume misfit between the um, the homogeneous state versus a fluctuated state and also the two fluctuated the linear and the richer portion has negligible interfacial energy okay if we can assume those then the system free energy change due to the local composition fluctuation as we gave before that g v would be final state g zero prime minus initial state and uh, of course, don't forget the final state would be two terms added up together. One half is for the richer part. The other half is due to the linear part. And the richer part, the first order has plus signs. And uh, the linear part for the first order has negative sum well for both cases the second order term are positive because the data x uh, square term is always positive so with this 
the data G V term can be simplified. And uh, you can easily find that if you combine half of data G0, half of data 0, that would cancel with half of G0 and half G0 would cancel with this uh, minus G0. And then half of plus first derivative term and half of minus first derivative term would cancel with each other, which means the difference or the change um, due to of final state minus initial state would just be the two second order term added up together one half and one half added up so we get one over two of second order derivative of Gibbs free energy versus composition times the square term of the composition fluctuation okay data x squared so this equation give us the combo, uh, free energy change due to this minor composition fluctuation that we call delta x plus and minus delta x. Therefore, in order for this uh, free energy change due to composition fluctuation to be spontaneous, as what we uh, discussed, the only way in order for delta GV to be negative is for the second order derivative term to be negative because delta x squared term is always positive. So this second order derivative term of Gibbs free energy was a composition term to be negative. That essentially means the same thing as what we said. The region for this spontaneous phase change due to composition fluctuation can only happen within the inflection curve in the section that we have concave done okay and only under this situation that the free energy change for due to the composition fluctuation will be negative which is what we said before. And this becomes the driving force for spin nodal decomposition within the chemical spin nodal. Okay? The phase transformation or phase separation going from one single uniform phase to two um, phases that has composition slightly different. One is plus. Uh, delta x, y is negative delta x. This change due to composition fluctuation will be spontaneous. Spontaneous by spontaneous, we mean the Gibbs free energy has to uh, reduce, or the free and Gibbs free energy change has to be negative. It would happen only when the second order derivative of Gibbs free energy versus composition is negative which means it's within the so-called chemical spin node, within the inflection points. Okay?